Welcome to a draft edition of Begley's Mailbag, where we answer your questions about the Knicks and the NBA. And we're going to start off with Rude Boy, NYK. He wants to know what are the Knicks likely see as their biggest needs in the draft. And, you know, when you're picking at 11, it's hard to really control much ahead of you, and it's hard to know who exactly is going to be there for you. But I think in general, for this Nick team, uh, shooting, they're looking for more shooting, and also uh, they're looking for a dynamic guard, a guard who can create off the dribble, create open looks for his teammates. And so those are two positions of need for the club. I, I know that based on uh, what they've said to other teams and what they've talked about internally, and also you know, Mitchell Robinson, that situation, it could also factor into draft night because if the Knicks feel like they're going to lose him in free agency, then maybe you pivot towards a big man. Although uh, all the caveats here are that with the Knicks right now, Tom Thibodeau, Leon Rose, everybody, you know, I think the, the need is to win some games next year and to not repeat, you know, a 37 win season. So uh, when you're projecting whoever they take at 11 or in the draft forward, I think that player is going to need to be able to help you out uh, pretty soon. Another note when you're talking about biggest needs for the Knicks, obviously Julius Randle's future is uh, always going to be a question uh, after the year he had last year. And, you know, some people in the organization don't see the value in moving off Randle just to move him uh, and open up minutes for Obi Toppin. You know, they see that as a move that's not wise in a bigger picture sense. Uh, so that's just worth noting because Randall surely his name will pop up in trade rumors and uh, I don't know though that the Knicks are dead set on just getting off of him to get off of him uh, because that's not a, uh, an opinion that has unilateral support over there at the moment. We've got one from Cash Walken and he says, you know, there's only one question everybody wants the answer to. Will we or can we get the number four to take Ivy? I think you can. Uh, I would think that, you know, you'd have to really put together a significant deal uh, to Sacramento. And I would assume that you would have to part with one of those young guys. Uh, it's worth noting on Ivy that the Knicks have sought some information about which teams are really strong on Ivy and uh, which teams are, would be likely to draft him. And presumably that's because, you know, they want to know where they might have to move up to to get him. But, you know, that price is going to be significant. Sacramento is not just going to, uh, you know, give that pick away for one veteran and a, and a pick that's not that valuable. The Knicks would have to give up a lot, uh, multiple picks. And so is, is this one of your big swings if you're Leon Rose? Do you believe in Jaden Ivey that much uh, to go up and get him? And then is there enough patience from a top-down perspective uh, to groom Jaden Ivey and try to go forward with a young core and build this thing out that way, you know, as opposed to trying to increase the win total immediately next season. One other note here on the potential trades. I mean, when you're talking about the young guys, obviously Obi Toppin and Emmanuel quickly are among those players. And one thing I know is that there was a push uh, in at least one corner of the organization to try to get quickly more playing time next season. And so that's worth noting as you consider any potential trade scenarios. And then with Obi Toppin, uh, there are some players who, you know, at the end of the year, towards the end of the year, felt like Toppin, you know, was ready for a bigger role. Obviously, they don't make the decisions, but they see a lot of what we don't see. And they felt like Toppin was really you know, a good player, a lot of promise there. So, you know, just worth noting as you talk about young guys and, and who's in and who's out and how people feel about them. We've got one from Patty Coates who wants to know, all the talk about trading up with what we've seen from the front office, how likely is trading back and out of the lottery. Now, you know, we know there are teams behind the Knicks who will be looking to move up. Uh, I think Chicago is one of them. And then you look at uh, a Denver team, multiple picks, maybe they want to move up uh, in this draft. So there's gonna be teams, I'm sure, calling the Knicks about 11. And based on history under Leon Rose, we've seen them do this multiple times where they have a player that they like at their spot and that player is sliding back and they decide to pull the trigger on a trade, move back and get that player. You saw it with Quentin Grimes and Miles McBride. So yeah, the history is there. I think it's a, it's a Brock Aller maneuver. So certainly would not rule that out. And I think though that if you're, if you're the Knicks and there's a player who's in that neighborhood um, that you like, but you don't love, I could also see you kind of moving out of the draft entirely and punting to another year uh, because you have all these young players on this roster right now. And my assumption is that 
you can't have all these young guys for next season because, again, my assumption is you're going to have to win some games next year, improve on that 37 win total in 2022, 2023. Uh, do you trust a roster of, of majority young players in the rotation to do that? Uh, I would think it, in some way, shape or form, some of these picks get consolidated and turned into a veteran player. And obviously, you know, free agency and teams' plans for free agency factor heavily into the draft. And then you turn to Jalen Brunson and you know, the prevailing thought uh, among people that I've spoken to is that Dallas uh, would not let Jalen Brunson leave, that they're going to do what it takes to keep him. And so then you look at a team like Detroit, some people over there certainly had interest in Brunson. If he's going to remain in Dallas, uh, then they turn their attention elsewhere. So there's, I think there's going to be mutual interest between Miles Bridges and Detroit, at least a degree of mutual interest. So that's something to keep an eye on because these dominoes could impact the Knicks. Obviously, Bridges, as we noted, uh, people with the Blazers also see Bridges as a potential target. So, you know, if Bridges moves on or if he stays in Charlotte, uh, it's going to fill a hole for a team. And then that's going to impact what the Knicks can do in free agency. Got a good one from Meezy F Baby. And Meezy wants to know, what are the chances of Mark Berman of the New York Post, his prediction coming true, on Johnny Davis at 11 and the trade of Evan Fournier. Look, I love Berman. I'm, I'm never going to doubt a Berman prediction. Uh, I've seen many be right, some be wrong. Uh, but that aside, uh, we want to wish Mark Berman and his family well. He's away uh, for the moment, uh, dealing with a family issue. Uh, we sincerely hope that all goes well with his family and, and what he's dealing with. Uh, nothing but love from us to Mark. Uh, with regard to you know, Johnny Davis, you know, if he's there, I would think that the Knicks take a long, hard look at him. I don't know if he's going to be there at 11. Uh, I'd be a little bit surprised if he was. And Evan Fournier, that piece of it, you know, look, with Fournier, there was interest from prominent voices in the organization to move him at the deadline. Uh, but then he really steadied and shot the ball incredibly well. So for me, if, if I'm a team that still needs shooting like the Knicks do, you're trading out one of your best shooters. Uh, what are you getting back? Can you replace his shooting? Because if this team stays at the level it was last year from a shooting perspective, you know, it's, it's easy to see how they could be stagnant. So you need to add shooting, not trade it out. So there's a transaction where you can add more shooting and send Fournier out, sure. But beyond that, I don't think it's wise. Got a question from LMR811 asking about Dyson Daniels and if the Knicks can't get all the way to four, do they like Daniels enough to get him at seven or eight? And if you're talking about moving up to that real estate, you're looking at Portland and the presumption is that Portland is looking for a veteran, a win now player in any trade from a team looking to move up to that spot. Uh, can the Knicks fill that for them so they have somebody that Portland is interested in. You know, they have the trade exception that Julius Randle would fit into. I'm not sure if what how they feel about Randle Portland, uh, but it would be a tricky transaction for the Knicks. And is Dyson Daniels, you know, do you love him enough to move up for him? I haven't heard that they do. I know that they like him. I haven't heard that the affinity is strong enough to go ahead and give up assets to move up and get him uh, from that seven or eight spot. Uh, but certainly things can change between now and draft night. But at this point, you know, that hasn't come across my radar. At least. And we've got one from Jake Brown eight on Twitter. Jake wants to know what, in your opinion, is the best case scenario for the Knicks and what is the worst case scenario for the Knicks? Uh, if I'm looking at this thing, big picture, you know, we know that the Knicks have been looking for that dynamic guard for a long time now. Best case scenario for them is that player somehow falls in their lap or they're able to move up without sacrificing too much of the young players that they have right now and landing a Jaden Ivey. And then Ivey turns into that, that foundational piece, that lead guard that every team in this league needs that they've been searching for for so long. And then worst case scenario is you give up assets to move up, to go ahead and get Ivey, a player like that, and that draft pick does not pan out. And it turns into uh, a scenario where you gave up those assets that you've been holding on to for so long now, going back to Steve Mills, Scott Perry, even Phil Jackson, they've been holding on to picks. And so if that, that trade where you're sacrificing some of those assets does not work out, 
that really, really puts a, a, a nail in your coffin if you're Leon Rose in this regime. I'm not saying that, you know, it's a fireball offense, but it really hurts you, sets you back. So to me, those are best and worst case scenarios for this club on draft night. That's it for this edition of Begley's Mailbag, but keep it locked on SNY.TV for all your Knicks draft coverage.